every now and then the ultimate feeling happens that feeling when everything just clicks when your body and mind are in unison working together and it's really really glorious all right maybe that wasn't the moment but it is called the zone when you get in it and what I'm going to do for you in this tutorial is give you some tips and ideas for being able to get into the zone more often that feeling of amazingness we all want it so let's get into it more often being in the zone can also be described as being in flow state for me it's that feeling that everything becomes easy you're right there in the moment nothing else matters time sort of loses meaning you just flow it's paradise it was this man, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, with his crazy hard name to pronounce, that was the first to identify and research flow state. And he tells us that flow state occurs when your body and mind are stretched to the limit in a worthwhile activity, when our skill or ability level and the challenge are about equal. If your ability level is greater than the challenge, like in an easy base run, or if the challenge is greater than the current ability level, like a hard interval session, then flow state is a lot more difficult to get into. It's not impossible, just harder. Usually for us runners and triathletes, the place where the challenge matches current ability is a race or event. But it can happen on other days, and that's the aim here. And particularly, having your best moments on race days to justify all of that hard work would be the cherry on top of the cake. Now we know what being in the zone or flow state is, and we know that the condition necessary for us to be in that state is to be stretched to just about the edge of our limit, but our ability level matches the level of challenge. So now what we need to do is we need to go about replicating these conditions in training, but not physically mentally. You've got to look at it like this. We can't be in flow state all of the time. That's just, there's too many influences. There's too many external factors going on for that to be possible. But what we can do is in training, we can work on the conditions necessary mentally for us to get into flow state more often. And more importantly, when we need to. I mean, I've had, I've had moments in training where I've suddenly found myself, you know, where it all just feels like it clicks, even when I'm on an easy base run. I've had moments in training when I'm on a hard interval session when it clicks and I feel great and it feels like I could run forever and the pain level's lower and all of those things. So you can replicate it and you can be in the zone and you can be in flow state in training. But what I'm really interested in is getting into flow state when I want to, when I need to. And I know this channel is not all about racing, it's about building relationships with running for life. But we all love racing. I mean, the majority of us do. It's, uh, it's kind of like that icing on the cake for me. It's getting out there and meeting people and, and seeing if what I've put into practice in training can come out on race day. So yeah, it's a nice little payoff and I wanna be able to access the zone more often in racing. But obviously, nice bonus if I can get it during training too. So just like, running at a certain pace when you're in a training session or a tempo session or working on your technique when you're doing run drills before you do your runs is working on the physical side of you and the physical side of training. What we can also do is we can practice the mental aspects of training so that not only are we training body while we're out there, but we're training mind and hopefully the two come together when we need them to. I can't possibly sum up flow state or zone in this video. It's just so complicated. But what I'm gonna do is I've tried to dilute it into five top tips from me that I think would really, really help you get into flow state more often, or at least give you a better chance of it. So we're gonna break it down into two things that you can do before you even go out training and have an amazing day when you need to. First thing you need to do when you're planning your run is plan to avoid distractions. Now I'm not saying stop using music altogether on your training sessions because I know that music is a real help sometimes. What I am saying is that when you go on your sessions where you're practicing your mindset and trying to get into the zone, then music is more likely to be a distraction than it is a help because it makes you focus on other things that are outside of the run. And what we want to focus on is everything that is happening right there and then, the mindfulness part of it, the being in the now, and music doesn't let that happen. So I'm not saying stop using music, I'm saying stop using music on these practice runs. Oh. 
the other main distraction you have when you go out running or when you're a runner is running in groups, running with people. <sighs> And again, I'm not saying don't do this ever. What I'm saying is when you want to practice getting in the zone, when you want to practice flow state and mindfulness, that running with other people is again a distraction. I've been out running with friends and barely even noticed the run, which is great, but I wasn't able to really drill down and focus on the being in the now. So for now, the order of the day is running on your own. Bye Mary. We're only joking. We've got different runs to do anyway, haven't we? I haven't been deserted. <laughs> Secondly, I've got to do the ice off the car. Have a clear purpose for your run. Have a reason to go out, not just to run. Although, that is a valid reason to run, by the way. But when you're working on your mindset, when you're planning on trying to get into the zone, have a purpose. And it could be as simple as a base run, staying in your base zones, or it could be a hard interval session. But have a purpose, and that helps your mindset when you get out there straight away. So pick a session, go execute on it. And after you've done those two things, time to get out on the run. Winnie? No? Yes? Yeah, she wants to get out. Now we're out on the run. There are three things that we can do that can help us be in the moment and therefore in the zone more often. And the first one is self-talk. Obviously I picked the hardest hill to run up to make this point, but actually it should make it quite nicely. Self-talk is the ability to acknowledge you're gonna have thoughts, negative and positive, and that these thoughts, if you dwell on them, they take you away from being in the now especially the negative if you ignore them they fester quite like i'm trying to do here so i'm trying to run up this hill and my body is saying please slow down please stop it hurts and so i talk to myself and say i wonder when you show up nice to see you but on your way and i send that thought on its way and focus on just my technique of getting up the hill and now i'm at the top and i didn't think about that thought anymore just focus on my technique to get me up here and if you're struggling with that concept a friend of mine Mike Porteous once said that he teaches his athletes that when they have those hard thoughts when they're in pain when they're running to just say to themselves this is hard but I do hard things and you're almost self-talking yourself into a place where it's all much more manageable so self-talk is the precursor to getting in the zone because it brings you back into the now. You let thoughts just go by like clouds, but you acknowledge them. And once you've mastered the art of self-talk, once you understand that that's so important to bring you back into the moment, but to acknowledge your thoughts and feelings, positive or negative, and see them on their way, it's time to really start thinking about how we get in the zone. And we do that with trigger words. Now, trigger words, are a phrase or action or even word that bring you back into the moment if you have continued to drift after you've acknowledged your thoughts, after you've done some self-talk. And what they do is they allow you to come back into the moment and focus on something in the now. So for example, I know a lot of people's trigger words are light on your feet. So if you think or say light on your feet, it brings you back into thinking about your running technique, being light on your feet. Now for me, it's more about hands. I say hands because I have a problem of turning my hands out and keeping tension in my fists. So when I say hands, I relax them and I pretend I'm holding a Pringle between my two fingers, but also I turn my hand in because I know that my technique goes to pieces when I turn my hand out, the body compensates too much. So it's, it's almost a technical trigger that brings you back into the moment and makes you just focus on the now. So mine is hands, Mary's is posture, and it makes her run more upright. But regardless of what it is, a trigger word should train you to come back into the very moment that you want to be in rather than get lost in your, your thoughts and feelings. Right, let's finish this run off. And third, if you want a session idea, then I've given some of my athletes what I call flow state fartlek. And it's just a little game, a little interesting session that can help them access the zone or be in the moment more readily. And it works like this. You go out for your easy base run, 
But every time you find your mind wandering, you either speed up to a tempo pace, so a slightly hard rate out of 10 pace, or slow down to a walk and purely focus on your technique until your thoughts are brought back just to the technique and then you're allowed to run normally again. So in essence, when your mind wanders, you're triggering it by slowing down or speeding up to come back into the moment you want it to be, to come back into the moment there where you are, but keeping it fun as well, because at the end of the day, you gotta have fun, right? So there you have it three tips or techniques or tricks whatever you want to call them for whilst you're out running that are eventually going to help you access the zone or flow state more often the first one being self-talk the second being having a trigger and the third is mixing it up in your sessions a bit of flow state fartlek or just having fun with it and remember ultimately none of this is going to work if you don't deem it a worthwhile activity, but I figure, considering you're watching this channel, that you deem running worthwhile, right? You definitely do. So do I think that all of these tips are gonna help all of you people? No, definitely not. However, I am a big fan of just trying lots of different things and seeing what works for you, because anything that I've just talked about here might unlock something in you that you never knew possible. We don't know yet until we try. So it's about throwing mud and seeing what sticks is how I look at it, it's not being afraid to fail and not being afraid to try a bit of trial and error. Because the thing is, flow state is complicated and it's nuanced and I couldn't be expected to do it justice in just this one video, but I'm trying to give you at least the basics. And what I really believe in is that it is about being in the now. A friend of mine, Stephen Leckie, he did a lot of interviews with a lot of elite rugby players, top level rugby players, and I think people from other sports about what they were thinking about when they remember those moments that they were in the zone. And what it really boiled down to was that when they were in the zone, they can't remember thinking about anything. They were just there in it, in that moment. And when they had their worst games, when they made their mistakes, when they had bad games, bad moments, it was always because they were overthinking things, they were overcomplicating it, they were analyzing, they were caught in their feelings and thoughts, and that's why they had bad times. So we know flow state is related to being in the moment, being in the now. Right, what's coming up? Well. This Sunday is possibly one of the most important videos that I've ever made and it's a way that we as a community I feel could make a big big difference to a lot of lives so stay tuned for that that's coming this Sunday also in the next couple of weeks I'm attempting a sub 18 minute five kilometers I feel like I might be in about the right place physically to do it and I've never done it before in a flat 5k in just a straight out of 5k so that's coming very soon in fact We've got a load of juicy content coming, so make sure you stick around on the channel. Thank you as always for interacting. It really makes a huge difference to us and it makes me feel like I'm part of a community, which is what I really wanted with this in the first place. Also, we just bought this book. Hold up. I'm now fully obsessed with the idea of being a runner that makes YouTube videos about the most glorious runs in the world. Oh man, that's like, this is like our Bible now. This is what we're sticking to. We want to do loads of these races. So that is coming up over the next couple of years because there's plenty that we can do from Southeast Asia. That's me. That's us, This Messy Happy, signing off for 2020. Here's to an amazing 2021 where we know that we can make a lot of difference. And I'll see you on the other side. Latest potatoes.